So it seems the whole of Beijing's 21 million population is visiting here today. I'm just getting a mobile phone cover made. Oh, it's looking a little bit dated. I've just spotted a funny t-shirt here. This one might go down well in Brighton. Yeah, you wouldn't want to be walking around with that. So I've got the case made. I put the latest piece that we've done. Me and A's rocks uh, that we've done in Nanjing, one of the trains. And I've got that as my case. I'm pretty happy. 35 RMB, which is about uh, £4.50 or $6. Coconuts. Seems like the wrong weather for coconuts. Minus 5 degrees. Not really sure what's going on here, but they keep staring into a box. I'm wondering if it's some kind of good luck, fortune telling, something like this, maybe. The decoration of these streets are really nice. I mean, look at this shop. It's really nice with the lanterns up there. You know, they're pretty beautiful buildings here. I think that will be my next Halloween outfit. So they call these alleyways hutongs. That's the Chinese name. In Beijing, there's a lot of these hutongs. Some traditional Mao bags over there. Small Mao cup. Five RMB. Yeah. Pretty cheap. Stay warm here. Fifty RMB. Looks like six pounds, eight dollars, something like that. Look at this. This is the equivalent to one of our pound shops. Everything ten RMB. This is about a pound ten. One one dollar forty. One dollar thirty five. Get some gloves, ain't a bad idea. Three pair of socks, a beanie hat, and gloves. 50 RMB, six quid. It's a bargain. It's all made out of sugar. It's a popular Beijing snack. So this is saying 10 RMB for five pieces. We've got a little bit of street art here. By Dark Cruise. 
Right, I'm just about to head to Tiananmen Square if I can find this subway station. I'm a little bit lost here. Just on the way to the Mao Mausoleum, uh, this was constructed shortly after Mao's death in 1976 and still haunts his body to this day. That is a long time to preserve a body. I've had to check in my backpack as no bags and cameras are allowed inside. There is uh, people buying flowers here to pay their respects to Chairman Mao. Uh, the flower is going to set you back a couple of quid. Just come out of here. After viewing Mao Zedong, it's been here for about 45 years, I think, on display. But security is very tight. There's zero chance of getting a photo in there. In China, 70% of people speak Mandarin, and the Beijing dialect is considered the standard Chinese. It's a really difficult accent to understand. And it's almost comparable to a Geordie speaking to a Southerner back in the UK and you can't understand it and you have to ask them two or three times that's usually what happens here in Beijing so you've got Hong Kong that speak Cantonese you've got Guangdong province that speak Cantonese but predominantly the rest of China will speak Mandarin but in each city or village they'll have their own dialect so you've got hundreds of languages maybe thousands of languages but most people can conversate in Mandarin or Cantonese. There still will be the older generation in many villages in rural areas that wouldn't speak Mandarin or Cantonese and would only speak their local dialects. But the characters are the same, the readings are the same. So if you were a Mandarin speaker and you couldn't conversate with a Cantonese speaker, you could write down your message and that way you would be able to communicate. These look like some traditional tribal type of people. I'm just heading to the entry gate of the Forbidden City to get a quick snap. Uh, it costs around 60 RMB to get inside. Uh, it opens up about 8.30 a.m. in the morning. And a word of warning, it's always busy. So it seems the whole of Beijing's 21 million population is visiting here today. Thanks again for watching. Please make sure you hit that subscribe button. And until the next one, Zai Jian.